in whatever best way you can. Please over to you, ma'am. Okay. So thank you, Professor Balakai, and also KNS BBIT Institute of uh, Technology for inviting me and uh, also the students for joining. So just to understand, uh, so we have fifth semester as well as seventh semester, right? Or uh, what is yes, the composition of the uh, students? Both fifth semester as well as seventh semester, all branches. Mix. It's a mix, and all branches. Okay. So, yeah. I'll, so I'll keep it very generic because uh, I think you know the students are a mixed crowd. But I think uh, maybe I can start off with the uh, seventh uh, semester because you are the ones who are actually getting into placements. Uh, so seventh semester students, I think you know the placement has already started or could be on the uh, any time now. You know, for uh, some of the colleges it has already begun. So I think you know now uh, in the seventh semester there is nothing much to do. So my recommendation for the seventh semester is. Don't tax yourself because all the preparation that you had to do should have been done by now. Okay, so in the seventh semester, you know, because you cannot do anything about your marks, uh, your projects are already there in place, uh, and uh, your technical skills, you know, your fundamentals up to now, up to the seventh semester is, uh, you know, six semesters going to be asked. So what you could uh, still do is, you know, brush up on uh, company-specific papers because uh, the companies have all opened up, right? Invoices is uh, coming any time, end of uh, September or October. Then you also have uh, you know various other mass recruiters which are planning to come. So I think what you have to do is you know get, uh, you know if you can do some company specific training in the last minute because last minute you know it's only to for those particular companies. Uh, please check out what is the format for that particular company, whichever you are writing for, and uh, brush up on that. And uh, one more very important thing which I would really uh, uh, listen to the students is uh, have very good connectivity because I, we finished Capgemini. And uh, quite a few students had connectivity issues. So even though they had registered, they had this issue and they could not do the test uh, properly. So what I would say is, you know, please go to a place where the internet connectivity is good, so that you do not have any issues while giving the test. Next is uh, your online uh, interviews, which you should uh, be able to uh, understand how it's going to be. Um, uh, I had a few students, and they said uh, online interviews were easy for them, but uh, usually online interviews could be a little difficult because the interviewer cannot see you, right? So if the interviewer cannot see you, then you know they don't give you much of a benefit of the doubt. Because when I'm seeing you face to face, like today, if I'm seeing you face to face, it's much more easier to interact. Because you can, I can understand your body movements a little bit more, right? So you know it could be a little tricky for you. So what you have to do is again keep your background, uh, you know, because uh, you know your interview, your room should look a little professional. So you know go for the some sort of a blank background at the back. Uh, you know beds and all should not be visible. Uh, it should be tidy at the back, and uh, have your pen and paper and all that. And uh, you know, go through, uh, you know, check with your seniors as to what they were asking. But usually the sure shot question is, tell me about yourself. Uh, then you know uh, it could be about your whichever branch you are. It will start off with your fundamentals. So your fundamentals have to be very strong. Uh, I was just asking my students who have finished SAP. Uh, so you know they start off with the second year, third year, final year. Uh, final year, of course, you you have not yet. You have just gone got into. So the second year and third year, especially the second year, you know. So this is what they are looking at. Because every subject fundamental starts from the second year as you enter enter the branch. But mechanical and all, you know, even the first year they will ask many times. And even for you, because I think in the first year also you all have a basic understanding of all the branches, right? So it could start from your first year and definitely from your entry branch entry. Then a favorite subject of yours, okay? So you know, you know, whichever out of all these subjects that you have studied as of now, have at least one subject which is your favorite subject. And uh, they are going to ask questions on your subject because they are not. See, one thing I want to tell every student over here is they are not asking what you don't know. Okay, the whole purpose of the interview is to check what you know. Okay, so they are going to ask your favorite subject. It's not going to be interviewer's favorite subject. So one favorite subject, and that is in and out. Because I think you know, for students, what happens is they you leave out a few questions here and there, parts during studies. Because you know you can uh, you have this choice in the exam, right? So many students do that. But I think you should you know you should, whichever subject you say that subject in and out. So even if you have left a particular topic in that particular subject, you should know it well. Okay, so that is very important. Subject fundamentals extremely important, and then your projects. Okay, so they will ask you on your project. This is a very important question. Okay, because see what what can I ask you much? Uh, three years of your studies, so there isn't much of much to ask. 
project is a very important area where they are going to concentrate. Now, the first thing that they are going to ask is, why did you do this project? You know, they want to know a lot about your project. Many students will say, I did. I chose this project because uh, whatever reason. They will ask, did you do a research? Is it going to help somebody at the end? Usually, a project is done so that there is a user, there is an end user. No point in doing a project. No point in doing a project which is not going to help anybody, right? So you know, sometimes I've heard students tell, "I have done a particular project for the police department," and then they will ask, "Did you check which police department did you go? Did you check with the police people?" No, sir, we didn't do that. Then how did you think that it is important for the police people? So don't do something like that. Or even if you have already done the project, please have you know uh, know who is the end user and have an answer for that. Another thing that students miss out is I did a part of my project. This was the part that I did. My friends did the other part. So if you are doing it in a group, you should know what each one has done. Okay, because for for them it is your project. Okay, for you it may be that is my friend's part. This is my part. Okay, so it's like biryani. Okay, someone has chopped the vegetables. Someone has cleaned the rice. Someone has done something. But in the end it is a biryani, right? So all the ingredients come together. So your project is that. So you should know your project in and out. Another thing is, uh, students sometimes say, "I've done a project, and uh, I have seen this happen." Students, because I'm just because I'm not an engineer. I am a non-IT person, a non-technical person. Okay, in terms of engineering. So I have seen this happen. The uh, interviewer actually opens his laptop and then he types something and he says, "This project could not have been done." Okay, I have seen this also happen. They say, "No, I've done the project. I've already finished it." He says, "No, you could not have done because then the I mean, Google is there, right? So everyone does that. You know, you cannot fool them. So the basic idea is, you cannot fool. Students have heard them telling, my faculty is approved, my this one is approved. You know, this is not like some uh, viva going on. You know, academic. See, these are people who have come to pick people to work for them, and they're going to pay good money. Here, colleges, we pay money. Companies, companies are paying money." So they will not take a fool. They will not take someone who is a cheater. Okay. So please do your uh, research very well before you say this is my project and submit it. And it's not that you have to have many projects. Another misconception that students have is I need to have five projects or six projects. Even if it is one decent project, it is good enough. But if you have multiple projects, that also shows interest of the student in that particular field because it shows basically application. So project is all about application, and they're very interested in your project. One more thing which I would like, like to tell students is don't give very short answers. This is a problem which is faced by most of the interviewers. They ask a question, and the answer is one line. Don't do that. Please elaborate. Okay. So you have to elaborate. Don't think he just asked me this and I finish it in one sentence or two sentences. Tell me about yourself also. No. Uh, see, it is a one minute thing. and that one minute you should cover everything you know about you so that it actually uh, interests the interviewer to know more about you if you do not answer that well i am not really interested in further going ahead right so tell me about yourself your project all these things you know you need to elaborate a little bit so that it interests the recruiter another point i think which they would be interested in knowing is your extra curricular activities so don't add this you know in your resume i have volunteered in this 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 these are not very important because volunteering is not a it's not a very major thing right so you can add as a last you know i wanted in these events but if you have volunteered in some you know uh, some 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 students are volunteers in ngos and organizations there if you write i'm a volunteer it's okay but for college events if you have volunteered it is not a great thing but you they need someone who has done something specific all right so your achievements should be like you know you have participated in some Uh, paper presentations, won a prize, or uh, uh, represented your college in some event. So if those highlights are there, then it is of interest. Okay, and uh, avoid writing what you have done in your school, tenth, twelfth, and all that. Because I am more interested in what you have done in these three years of your engineering up to the seventh semester. And uh, you can expect a question: your achievement in the past one year. Okay, so that could be there. Uh, there could be any question of you know why there's a dip. Usually, you know, 10 would be very high scoring, 12th is a little uh, less, and engineering would be quite low, you know, for most students. So that is also a question. Don't say I lost track or whatever, you know. So it should be a, a answer should be something because there will be consistency. 
So I think you should be able to justify in case you have no marks, you know, so somewhere, but with a, with a valid justification, all right. And uh, uh, basically these questions and one more very important uh, thing for the interview is look into the website very, very well because the company is going to ask you why do you want to join us, okay. And students do not have a very good reason for this. So if you have checked the company website, you will have enough of reasons to tell why you are joining that particular company. So you have to give them what you have read. And this is also a point to show that you have done your homework. I am interested in taking a student who has done his homework, wants to join me. Okay. So please, for example, if it is uh, any company, XYZ, I, you should research the company very, very well. And finally, sometimes during the, at the end, uh, they may say any questions for us. So please have at least a couple of questions ready and you can ask any one question because sometimes maybe it is answered during the interview. But you should also have one question for the interviewer. Okay. So that shows that you are very confident. You want your people to know about the company and all that. Okay. So that is something which you should uh, have. So these are basic preparations which you should be uh, taking care of. Uh, even during the interview, I think dressing formal, especially since it is online. Because see, when you are coming to the room, otherwise when I see you physically, I can see you, the whole you. But here I'm just seeing you waist up, right? So try to have a blazer or, you know, at least a tie. Even for the girls, because I think for the girls, what happens is they usually wear a salwar kameez. And from a salwar kameez, I cannot make out much whether it's formal or not. So what you could do is if, if you're wearing a salwar kameez, go for a high neck, okay? Uh, and uh, let it be crisp, uh, uh, you know, uh, what you say, and um, a formal, uh, formal looking attire. And uh, don't uh, think that, you know, waist down, nobody's going to see. So, you know, I can wear any jeans or something. So please do not, because for whatever reason you have to stand up or something, it's going to be visible. Have a pen and paper with you. Have your resume in your place, you know, and uh, I think this should set you going. And uh, even if you don't get an interview, don't worry too much. You know, uh, the, get motivated and get ready for the next one. Because this is going to happen. First day campus, so many get a job, so many don't get. And they're heartbroken. So don't lose your hope. So I think this is what I would want to tell for the uh, final years. But any question from the final years as of now regarding what I have said, I think I'm open to it. Or Professor Balika, in case you want to ask a few things, which uh, you know you want any specific answer for this. Yeah, I have a few questions coming in, uh, specifically with respect to some add-on courses or online courses which popped up like anything during this pandemic. Oh. And uh, many yeah. students are taking up any online courses and. Uh, uh, I just want you to highlight how this is going to help them and in what way they should prepare with respect to these online courses. See, uh, students, this is a short, short question. Okay, would you want brought this out? What did you do during the pandemic? All right. So this is a short, short question. What did you do? So a lot of students have done so many things. First, okay, you rested and then you watched Netflix and you know did all that. And then, of course, you know, so that time if you could say because a lot of courses are, are there, right? So, you know, I'm sure most of you would have done a few courses. So you can talk about those courses. If you have done, then they would say, why did you choose that particular, you know, Udemy or whatever. So why Udemy, why this, why that? So you would expect that question also, you know, so why did you choose this course and why that particular platform or whatever? So they will ask on that. And they may ask one or two questions regarding your course, because I also want to know what did you learn? Because see, to get a course, I think you spend hardly some 10 hours and then you get a certificate. And if you don't know what you have done, that is a problem. And uh, also, you know, what internships, this is important for students, uh, because now a lot of companies are giving you, especially the fifth semester students are seeing, if you can do online internships, that's a great plus for you, uh, because a lot of companies are now wanting people. See, uh, you, it could be a small internship, but if you have internships in your resume, it just shows the student is more interested than the average student. So internships and add-on courses, you know, but it's not like students that add-on courses are a must. See, uh, this, during internships, add-on courses, okay, you know, you did something constructive or you did a part-time job. But some people think that if I do these XYZ courses, it is very helpful. It may not be really helpful during campus. Why? Because a company is looking at fundamentals and engineering. Believe me, students know everything other than engineering. If they know, if you know your engineering, fundamentals and whatever you have studied, those subjects, then it is more than enough. But many students, you know, they talk about machine learning, they talk about cloud, they talk about all that. And then when I ask something about that, then they don't know. So it's better that you don't open your mouth if you do not know much. Uh, they attend some uh, webinar or they attend some one or two days of training. That may not help. 
because you may not get the surface of the subject and these are experts experts of 20 years 30 years of experience sitting in front of you and if you say i know this see they are they're not asking whether you know machine learning but if you say i know machine learning then i'm going to quiz you on that so if you don't know keep quiet they are looking at fundamentals see when they come to the engineering college i have seen this happen we all sit together and you know what they say you know just you know, just look if they can talk well and if they know the fundamentals and if this attitude is okay that's the discussion that goes there and here we hype ourselves oh i have to tell this i have to tell that basic thing is if you know your fundamentals if you know your engineering more than enough any other question uh, from the final guys yeah uh, ma'am we have uh, two more questions yeah. uh, the big uh, question is the importance of coding uh-huh programming yes. yeah uh, I, i just want you to highlight a little bit more because every time i get some resource person i usually ask the same thing and i know what answer they are going to give but yeah. i still want you to uh, highlight on uh, coding uh, capabilities or coding skills yeah. skills students coding is a mandatory mandatory okay thing for everyone all the companies have introduced coding so even if you are a mechanical or a civil uh, student or an electrical student you need to know coding why because they have imparted they have used coding as a part of your screening process itself okay nowadays there is nothing like no coding okay if coding is a part you cannot get away because you have studied that in first year but the level intensity of a mass computer coding will not, not be very high whereas uh, for for the it students when their core company comes the coding level intensity is more and they're looking at how do you do your codes okay they're looking at the uh, logic and all that but basically coding is definitely there so you cannot get away with coding uh, especially if you are in the fifth semester you still have time students uh, you know coding is not so great uh, just do this okay and uh, if there are me- are there mechanical students here mechanical and civil yes yes ma'am they they are there mechanical and civil students let me tell you goes out do you have also civil for you in your bra- in your college uh, professor balika civil civil branch is there civil and mechanical uh, yeah. students mechanical and civil students uh, uh, my sincere request to you all is you know you have this opportunity with infosys and tcs don't lose that opportunity okay uh, because you need to know a little bit of coding get into that you know you should have a job you should have a job uh, in your hand and then when the core company comes then you can opt out. you can do some other this thing okay but usually mechanical and civil i see them they don't want to write itself i am i am a non it so what will i do see let me tell you 90% of the companies that are going to come to any campus any college are it companies and if the company is okay with you all you better take it and that coding it could be very very simple you know so just rush up on the coding because once you get into see you know what the mechanical and civil students do better in it than non it do you know that it students it must be a shock for you it is it came as a shock to me also non it students better do better in it companies why because of the single reason that they know that they don't know okay so as a result they work hard so it's not that it is it people know more even they don't know okay but they use these jargons uh, no offense meant okay so then what happens is so may, they may know a little bit more that's about it but the company just takes you and then they train everyone equally so don't lose out on this job opportunity because manufacturing and all that is very less but i still would recommend merchant navy for you all uh, professor balika because merchant navy is a very good option for uh, you know mechanical uh, it's a core job if, if there is a training fee but only thing is you should choose a very good uh, company Uh, which has got its own ships so okay, uh, i have okay. people for mechanical uh, to get into it maybe but merchant navy usually comes in the eighth semester okay oh. so please try your hand with all the it non it business development a job in hand is worth two in the bush there may be a lot of friends there may be a lot of relatives who will say no 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 you do i will pay i'll place you no one will place you students if they place you great okay but you work with your ha- effort have a job whatever job you have and then you can decide Okay, so that is one thing which I would tell. So coding, everyone mandatory, no option. Yes. I would like to add one point, uh, Professor. Uh, usually, even I insist my students that you better grab an opportunity first, and then you uh, figure out where exactly you want to go. Because job in hand, like you told, is always a. Uh, yes. it, it gives a better feeling when you come out of the campus after your engineering because uh-huh. off campus is something which is an unimaginably so, troublesome. Don't go off campus. It's very very tough. Yeah. Uh, so uh, on this note, uh, like I am getting one more question, especially with respect to fifth semester as well as seventh semester. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know I am sharing. It's also applicable to fifth semester because see. Yeah, yeah definitely. Right now, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
yeah uh, when i say a good resume or a, the best resume what are the contents of a best or a good resume what 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 an industry person or an interviewer expects out of a resume all right see your uh, students resume is what no it's about you so if you are good your resume is good okay so it's all about what you have done see what does a resume consist of it consists of you know it's basically a one page format let me tell you right away a resume ideally is one page okay if you if it is a mass recruiter please have only one page but if it is a core company then you can go for two page all right why two pages then you can add a lot more of your technical stuff in that because one page to put maybe everything is not possible but if you can condense everything in one page great one page is actually very very nice but usually i see people just go for two page and nothing is there that whole one thing could have come in half a page also irrelevant information so leave out all the irrelevant information This other statement is true. Best to my knowledge, blah blah blah. It is understood. You are being honest. See, you can't lie at any point. So remove that. Language is known. Tulu, Kannada, Malayalam. Leave it. If you know French and Japanese, please put that. It doesn't make any sense if you know any of the local languages. And English, anyway, you know. So I don't put any languages known and all that. I'm just telling where you can, uh, you know, make space. Have a LinkedIn profile. If you do not have, please have a business. Add your blogs. And whatever, because see nowadays, on if everything has become online, so you can see what will happen is, especially with your uh, um, online uh, this thing uh, nowadays, because it's online for videos. You may, if I get somebody's resume and if I have those links, I will click on. I would like to see what they have done in LinkedIn. I would also like to know what how have they done in social media, because that gives me a fair idea as to who you are. Did you get it? If I just look look into your WhatsApp, if I uh, if I look into your Insta, if I can look into your LinkedIn, I will come to know what you are socially and what you are professionally. And let me tell you, companies are very interested in knowing what you are your personally also because you cannot separate personal and professional. <laughs> the, your personal self is going to come to your professional. So please, if you have something, you know, have a look at whatever you have posted. Delete what is not required. And LinkedIn, you should have built. Fifth semester, you still have one year to go. Have a professional LinkedIn profile and build on. And if you have your blog, if you have your YouTube, if you have any such whatever, you know, please add in on your resume. Those links should be added, okay? And then uh, your marks should be there. Students like you know whatever. And students miss out the branch. I've seen this. College name is missing. It's very difficult to trace out. You know which college you have studied, all that. Because why? This is a campus recruitment. They will go to so many uh, colleges. So I, uh, in between, I, I, it is very difficult for me to trace. Email is there, but the college name is not there. Okay, so uh, your branch is sometimes missing. Students don't write the branch also. So your branch, all those uh, contact details, very very clearly. And your email also should be professional, not that cool guy, handsome, whatever. Uh, so make it professional. Basically, your name somewhere, somewhere with your name and initial. And uh, your projects are very important. Your extracurriculars, your internships, your certification courses. So these are the add-ons. You know, these are the things which makes it makes it interesting. And if you have done a part-time job, I can't tell you the value of a part-time job because wherever you have earned money. That is great. Did you get it? Why? Because if someone is giving you money for what you have done, okay, that means you have delivered value. So it could also be giving tuitions because the students think, oh, it is not related to engineering. If you have given tuitions, if you have given, uh, you know, if you have worked in a school as a part-time something or even in a bakery, even as a salesperson, and believe me, engineering and sales, no, it's a very, very good combination, deadly combination. Because if someone has done anything in sales, they are super interested. It, it is for a technical role because sales is very difficult. And at the bottom line, for every company, it is all about sales. If any company is making business, it is sales. And an engineer has to be a good sales person. Did you get it? So if you have got anywhere any experience in sales, believe me, students, it's an add-on. If you are if you are part if you are a member of Toastmasters, that's for public speaking. So if you have see public speaking skills, uh, seminar skills, all these are very high value skills. So please highlight those where if you have if you have experience. And uh, any achievements of yours. So basically, your resume consists of all this, and you know your projects do play a very very important role. So have, uh, you know your project should be there, where it is visible, and I know what you have done. Irrelevant projects miss out. So if you have done two good projects, uh, you have done three projects. Only two are very important. Then write about those two. Leave out the third one. You know. But while I'm talking, you can tell. See, it's not that you you have to put everything in the resume because when I'm talking, I get this opportunity to talk, right? So the resume is all about you. Don't add anything which is not there in yours. Career objective also not really very relevant now, okay? Because people see career objective for a fresher, what is there? Basically, you want a job that you use your engineering skills, plain and simple. But then you use these fancy words and do that, and then when I grill you, 
you are not able to explain. So then it doesn't look very nice. Did you get it? So you can actually leave a career objective also. It's not as mandatory as people think. Okay. But if you have a career objective, they make it two sentences, but it should not be those uh, fake. Okay. It should be related to you. Okay. And uh, from a fresher level. Did you get it? I am interested in doing this great project and all that. Nobody's going to take you. Okay. They just take you and then based on your performance, they may give you a project if there is a project in that field. So don't uh, put them off by telling all these high expectations because you know what, I don't, I'm not wanting the student to expect too much from uh, the company because anything I will give you. So you know, so those high words, fancy words and all, try to avoid. Okay? So these are the few things that you have to keep in mind uh, when you have your resume. Alright, so this is it. And photo also, you know, please have a photo because what happens is uh, I can place the face and the, this thing in context, okay? Because sometimes people say a photo is not required, but uh, somewhere photo also plays a, this thing in, during campuses. Otherwise, it's not really mandatory. But during campus recruitments, no photos uh, in your resume will help. Yeah, ma'am, to summarize, I think with respect to the resume, uh, one most important thing is you mentioned about LinkedIn profile. I think uh, most of my students are having that because I have initiated that uh, uh, this thing. And the other thing I just wanted to uh, give you, I mean, I want you to highlight is uh, how about the video resume? I mean, uh, a lot of companies nowadays, they ask for video resume. How that is different from the normal resume? Yeah, see, video resume is very difficult and it will be very attractive for any company to get that. But believe me, this will be asked by companies which are high end or into marketing or, or uh, uh, maybe some, uh, the same, what, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, startups, okay? Because I can get an overall picture. Mass recruiters alone may find it difficult, okay? But uh, let me tell you, going forward, this will be there because you know what? Re resume page, right? The, page, the photo and the person are so different, right? So it is like that. Here it's like getting a visiting card. Resume is basically a visiting card. And when I'm seeing the person, it is so different. So you may see so many things, but when you speak, you know, that is the full proof. And when, I, when you speak, your resume may look, may look good, but when, you're, when it is not reflected in the way you talk, I am not really very interested. So you will have to practice this. Going forward, video resumes are there. And let me tell you, especially companies which are um, uh, international companies are looking for video resumes because they can't come personally, right? And especially online mode and all, they would want more of the video resumes and they're looking at your confidence. Basically, let me tell you students, they're looking at confidence. Now, what is confidence? People think speaking good English is confidence. Wrong. You know, what is confidence? When you know your subject well, then only confidence comes. People say, no, be confident, be confident. How will I be confident? See, if I have to speak about placements, I'm confident. But if I have to speak on thermodynamics, I can't be confident because I don't know the subject. Same way with the student. They can be only confident even in the interview or anything if they know the if they know their subjects, if they know their engineering, if they know their project, if they know their fundamentals. So you have to practice. First of all, write what is true. Okay, that is important and practice. So you, uh, I think, and it should be around one minute to one and a half minute max. And if you actually if you record your timing, you no, know, to speak for one minute is very difficult. You try this out, students. You know, just do this. Record your video. Ah, ooh, blah, blah. But you know what? You do it 10 times, you do it 20 times, 13th time definitely will come out well. So I strongly recommend after the session, you know, do a video resume of yours. Speak for a minute about yourself so that it interests me to ask you further questions. Otherwise, looking at the video resume only, I'll be like, oh, no, no, not required, not required. Did you get it? So video resumes is going to be uh, playing a uh, the role henceforth, okay? But not maybe immediately. Did you get it? But definitely a few companies will be. So be prepared. Yeah. And one more common question is, uh, tell me about yourself, ma'am. Yes. Uh, yes. What is that the thing they should include and what is that they should avoid when they speak about themselves? I mean, I have, like, most of the students, they speak on uh, about themselves and they finally wind up telling about more about their family, their brothers, sisters. Yeah, uh, yeah. So can you just highlight? Yeah. So tell me about yourself is basically I want to know about you. So you can avoid I am Rashmi Bandari because you already know I am Rashmi Bandari. I am a civil student already. It's there in your resume. So avoid all this because see, tell me about yourself is basically one minute to max one and a half minute. It's called the elevator pitch. So what you should do, you should leave, remove what is not required. So you can say I am, uh, you know, from the thing, you know, so I am passionate about whatever. You know, you can talk about anything. <laughs> Which is a technical, uh, you know, the technical HR is talking about this thing. You can say that, you know, I'm, uh, since I'm a mechanical student, I'm very interested in thermodynamics. That's my fascinating whatever. My project is on that. And you, know, you can talk about that. And then you can, towards the end, you can come towards your family. 
you or some you can go the other way around i am you know uh, my father is this and all that but basically i just can't i will not be very interested to this uh, you know i think if you can add your family and that towards the end that would be good unless you know there's very something very interesting for example maybe you know um, um uh, uh, i was home school you know so that's a very interesting feature because very few students are home school i'm right on the beginning so i am so and so and i i'm uh, I did. I was home school for five years or ten years, and then I joined with this thing. And as a result, you know, I learned so many skills, which because of which I could put it in my engineering, and I did this. So, but basically, what I'm interested in doing is your technical stuff, students, and your projects. A little bit about the projects. I'm passionate about engineering, and as a result, I've done this project on this. I've done a few internships regarding this, and I come from a farming background. My father is a farmer. My mother is a homemaker. I have a brother who's studying in uh, engineering, and uh, my hobbies are blah blah blah. Okay, so that could come towards the end, but that's a very small part of you, your background. But your background is important because a lot of companies are looking at background. Because see, at the moment you say I'm a farmer's son, you know what they feel uh, authentic. You know, there's a lot of plus points for farmers' children or some. You know, if your uh, especially if your uh, parents are not, uh, you know, very educated. Also, they really appreciate because your parents have taken so much of effort to put you in this. So you know, uh, they feel that you know your. They, they they appreciate your parents' hard work to put you into engineering because they couldn't have that. So, or if your parent, uh, like you know, I always feel very proud to tell my father was in the army. So I add that whenever I have to tell because I feel that because of not because my father was in the army, because as a result, what happened is I also grew up there, and so I learned so many things which I'm using in my life. So they are basically interested in tell me about yourself, whatever I've learned and how I'm using it right now. Okay, in my engineering, as a result, what I can contribute to your company. You're getting it, and they have come only for your technical skills here. All companies are coming only for your technical skills. So you please highlight your technical skills, your projects, your internships during your. Tell me about yourself and your family background a little less. Okay, uh, but that should also be included, but maybe in a couple of sentences. That's about it. Uh, Professor, a uh, few of my students usually ask me. Uh, that sir uh, i am good in so and so technical skills but my cgpa is not that good yes uh, my cgpa is not uh, matching that company requirement but uh, can we be allowed for to attend the uh, company i just want you to highlight the importance of uh, cgpa why is that they keep that just the students you know please if you are looking at this finish up all your backlogs okay and your second attempt mark is counted so even if you have had a backlog Uh, and even this is for the final year students your second attempt mark is counted so you can always add that but if you have had a backlog please clear it because like this pandemic and all that people are stuck with the backlog and they don't know i don't know what is the rule now you know so you know all these things should not be troubling you seven semester believe me students you should just be ironing your shirt uh, on your salon kameez and sitting for the interview they should not any stress will i be allowed or not so marks are extremely important fifth semester students you already have a fifth semester you have a sixth semester Uh, you know, two semesters you will get, but not really two semesters also because second semester results may come out in September or October. I don't know whenever it comes out. So some companies come in August only. That time they will consider only up to fifth semester. So please do whatever you you think this fifth semester is my do or die. So highest marks whatever you can get to make up. Did you get it? And then you may get a sixth semester, but sometimes the sixth semester marks is not added because the companies come before that. So what will you do? You know, so that is also a problem. So go out for fifth semester, then also you have the sixth semester. Academic is extremely important. You know, so uh, and but how for whichever reason you don't have aggregate, don't lose heart. See, I, I'm sure Professor Balika will request all the companies which are coming. See, mass recruiters are high, their hands are tight. So if they say six CGP or seven CGP, we can't do. But uh, so many companies know we can ask them to relax. But don't think now the college is going to ask and they're going to relax. See, from our end, the placement department uh, survey also be doing. I also do. Everyone of us, we are doing our best. Okay, but some of them uh, may consider this. So wherever it is considered, try. It. Don't bother about the package. This is one thing the students are bothered. Package, package, package. Oh, this package. Forget it. Get a job. Job in hand. Students, let me tell you, job in hand, very, very important. Okay. So if you have, don't have aggregate as of now. Uh, attend whatever wherever it is open. Even if it is a business development role, because every college gives you a double chance. Okay, so when your product company comes or your core company comes, we will allow you. Even if you get into a IT company, master recruiter, we will give you a chance when product company comes or core company comes. Same way with even the IT students, master recruiter and all, we don't even consider. You know, we just consider okay, that's just a job, you know, bread and butter. So when a product company comes or a core company comes, you get a, or a higher package comes, we'll give you an offer. So marks is something which you have to wherever that seven semester award to do for you all. But still, seven semesters that because eight semester again companies will come. No? So let 
make it up. Even that one semester marks, don't lose out. Fifth semester still has got at least two semesters to make up. So don't lose out on your marks. I think you rightly mentioned about uh, having a job in hand. I just want to highlight to all my students, uh, 2020 batch, we had eight students being selected for Baiju's for a package of 10. And that was a great number uh, over the years for my institute. And there was a debate with uh, other faculties uh, with a placement team that why is it, what is that they are doing there for a business development profile? Yeah. And I think uh, having a job at this juncture is main uh, important criteria than getting into what uh, branch they are into it. Possibly they can definitely get the job with respect to their different branches or their passion later on also. But at this point of time, I think you, as you mentioned, having that job in hand and that too, uh, if it is of a BD, a business development profile or some other profile also, I, I don't think it doesn't matter a lot. Yes, it doesn't matter. Let me tell you at the end of the day, plain simple Rokna. You know what is Rokna? Money. Money speaks. Okay. We are not telling you. See, nobody is telling you to get into smuggling. Nobody is telling you to get into antisocial elements. Do you know students, an unemployed engineer will get into that. Okay, so what you have to do is take a job in hand. Okay, and let me tell you, their business development roles are extremely tough. Do you know this tech support roles? They have five rounds. Usually, otherwise, other companies just have an aptitude, then they may have a GD and then they have an interview. That's all. Okay, nothing more than that. These are tech support, business development role, the number of rounds they have because they make such huge money. So, did you get it? And students, your engineering skills or whatever skills you know, will never go in waste. Believe me. Every company, I will tell you, um, every company which wants an MBA you know, nowadays prefers a BE. Why? Because of the curriculum that you have, uh, these eight semesters, you no? Know, because you have taken so much of vigorous training, you actually excel in any field. Do you know that? So don't think only engineering is. And for some students, engineering was a mistake. So what? You know, now you have a better option. Get out. You know, you don't even have to do an MBA. You're getting the role of an MBA and do well. There is nothing. Don't look down on any job. Okay, technical. Do you know technical life? How much is it? Basically, it is five years if you are not really good. So it is rather do something where you have at least some twenty-five years of your life, right? Because let me tell you, students, have you seen? See, this is one thing which has always come to me. I was very interested. Okay, what happens to the girls? You know, who join IT companies? Do you know, students? I mean, uh, girls are there. What happens to these girls after five years? See, they do not survive. I'm not putting that. You know, discouraging you. The, what is happening is. 50% of the girls are out. Do you know that? Within five years, there not even 50% of the girls are left in IT. Boys are still struggling, not because they're better, because there is no other way. Okay? So you know, girls may get married and something or the other. It is tough. Technology is changing. So if you're not really IT material, you know, go into a non-IT, you have a longer career. And it's not that you have to be an IT or a mechanical or a this thing. Great if you get it, but any job. For example, look at me. Do you know what is my background? I am a BSc in microbiology. What is BSc microbiology got to do with placements? And do you know what I did? Other than MSW, what is MSW? Masters in social work. Okay. And I did correctional administration. Do you know what is correctional administration? It is actually working with prisoners. Did you get it? So I, when I think now, but I don't think I've lost my skills. You know what? Whatever I've studied, I'm applying it now because social service, helping students also is social service, right? So I mean, you can use your skills any which way. And four years, you think you've studied four years, lifelong you have to study. So, you know, that is why mechanical students don't want to get into IT. Oh, I've done four years, four years. What is four years, students? For 50 years, next row, you have to keep studying, 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 and changing, changing, changing. So don't bother. Whatever you get, and if it interests you, just go ahead. Just go ahead. Yeah. Uh, very rightly said, ma'am. Even I was surprised to see your profile and... Uh... Uh, we were wondering how come you have shifted your profession to such a drastic change. No, I didn't have a job. The students, my situation is worse than yours. You all have at least companies coming. You know what I did? After you got a job, I, I went to and stayed in the village, okay? But they don't even know what to do with an MSW. No job. I did something totally irrelevant to my studies. And had I not done my first job, which was not connected to my studies, today I would have not been this. My first job paid me 2000 But it learned me... Nobody would have gone for that job, okay? I just went because I was tired of sitting at home, unemployed, okay? And I just took that job and I learned so much, which I'm applying now even in my placement. So don't look down on any job. Just learn what I can learn. That's one more important point. Don't look at bonds. Students, fifth semester, seventh semester students, or two-year bond, or three-year bond. 
first of all let me tell you clearly bonds you know no it's uh, it is unauthorized okay i'm just telling you it is illegal to have a bond okay? so here is one case so it is not that you will go you know you're going to sue the company it is there okay because they are also investing on you but take it up and for whichever reason you may not be able to continue you know you're getting married or health issues or whatever they will forego it but don't go oh, to your god i can't go or uh, chennai i can't go don't be you know just be very anywhere take it up and go yeah i think uh, it's like you should be open for any opportunities any time anywhere and uh, that's how one can excel in, in his or her career Uh, ma'am uh, i think uh, uh, we have one last one or two last questions uh, yeah. in line with what you just said uh, specifically with respect to tech support or the profiles just which are uh, outlined nowadays like people usually uh, see that tech support is something like uh, oh tech, it is a tech support kind of thing why should i go there uh, just whatever you mentioned you can just highlight a few things about uh, whether should i join the tech support kind of thing and what are the different uh, uh, job roles that are available for an uh, engineer like yeah. there are it job there are software development and similarly there is a tech support and what is that the student have to think in this particular aspect so in, in terms of it core and all that see that is very clear you are getting a core job so you go in your core domain uh, whichever so it could be it non it so whatever you know product development and whatever so you go in that particular job but only thing is people have this confusion regarding tech support and what happens is see tech support is also a, uh, a profile by itself so one thing i should go and grow up in tech support it's not that once you are in tech support you are stuck in tech support because you become a team lead you become a manager so you can rise in tech support and big companies have this uh, change okay so if ibm has a tech support division so whenever there is an opening in uh, ibm development okay so if there is any opening there uh, and first it will be given to internal people so internal job postings are there so from my profile i can actually jump to a post profile also providing a clear that exam so you have to be in touch with your uh, academics that's about it in case you want to uh, get into the uh, technical side because the first opening is always given to internal employees then they publish publish it out so after 8 or 9 months you can actually do this uh, transfers from here and there and good to allow engineers from uh, engineering line to get into hr and business uh, you know management all those sorts of things it changes keep happening so it's not that you have to be stuck with one thing and uh, tech support take up a tech support work your way up see what happens is job in hand what gives you is you get money so you no longer have to depend on your parents See, suppose I have an interview in Bombay. I have to ask my father for money. My father knows what a lousy student I am, so you will not even hear. To go to bank, you have to give me five thousand. So, daddy, five thousand. Daddy will say, no, beta, you have not even cleared all these. So, why should I give? No, no, no. But if you have your own money, you don't even ask for money from your father, right? So that is why you have money. Second. There's a structure for your day. Morning you will go to office. Otherwise you sit at home. Relatives will come. What are you doing? Okay, everyone is interested. Okay, suddenly they are very interested. What job? Okay, students just wait for your first mass recruiter. Then you will understand how curious your neighbors are. Oh, did your son get a job? Did your son? Your parents may not know. Company is there, but your neighbors will ask. Make sure that your parents know. Okay, so it will give you structure for the day. So you will no longer be depressed. Third thing is you will meet people. So when you meet people, your network improves. When your network improves, you come up with more jobs. So that's why. And so then you can jump, and you have money in your hand. Tomorrow interview is there. Here relocation, no problem because some ten thousand, fifteen thousand is coming to your hand. And don't look down on that, students. Please don't look down. So just take up any job, and then you can work your way. And there is nothing called good job, bad job. And sometimes they say, oh, if you take this, your life is ruined. Then you know your whole this thing is gone. No. See, life is. Students don't see you're so young. You're twenty years old, twenty-one year old. Life is another hundred years. Okay. So what is this twenty-one years? Did you get it? So many things. People do new things at forty. At twenty-one, twenty-two, if you take up a one-year job, something else, you can always shift. Or maybe you can do something related to that. So don't look down. Pick up any job and just start your career. You know, it will be fantastic. But don't sit without a job. That's the only thing. Message. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I just want to quote one example of my student. Uh, she joined in Amazon as a tech support engineer, and then she uh, changed her company from Amazon to Intel for the same job role uh, in the tech support. 
and from the intel uh, inside job opening from the tech support now she is into physical domain that is vlsi core domain i think that's uh, one of the inspiration that uh, i usually uh, tell my students that this is how you have uh, yes. through internal openings lot of opportunities that are there and i think this is the best way if you cannot enter through the front door get into the back door and make your career students just get and take a job and uncle telling this job and don't even discuss job with your parents because i tell you one thing parents don't know much i'm not telling that you know see they are not very respect so they know only infosys they know only tcs they may not know uh, one company by name uh, black rock technologies now this black rock technologies doing wonderful job but if i tell black rock technologies they will tell you what is this black rock technology so don't even discuss too much if they are not aware don't give them stress take up a job and continue away and uh, girls especially girls my heart goes out to all the girls please do not leave your job for the sake of marriage okay students have your job okay do gone are the days oh after two years you know or first of all relocation no delhi they will not send delhi also wherever you get a job please go you should have your money students i just can't tell you girls the importance of having your own money and uh, marriage you know if the boy really wants then you can always adjust okay so don't leave your job for the sake of marriage did you get it Uh, job itself is marriage okay then second marriage did you get it your husband is your or your and for the boys also on this thing don't make your wife uh, leave a job let her work around the job okay and then you can have a posting or some adjustment and if you are leaving also pick up a job and then get married because and whatever uh, one more message i just want to tell higher studies please don't go for higher studies i know a lot of students may be offended engineering is more than enough if you want to get into Uh, IT comp or any company, okay? So uh, because if we are running short of time, so job uh, higher studies I will not recommend. If you want a job uh, in the engineering line, higher studies is meant for teaching line, okay? If you want to get into teaching, great. Please do a PhD, do an MS, do a M, uh, M Tech, and then do a PhD. But if you are not interested, uh, or if you want to get into research, okay? But the chance in research is very less. R and D companies are very very less. See, I get so many companies, one seventy companies every year we get. If I look at how many one M Tech no, hardly out of that one seventy, no ten companies, hardly ten, not even ten, seven eight only single digit companies. Everyone wants engineer, no one wants an M Tech. Then you say no no no, because it is M Tech no, I will go to foreign country, I will do an MS, I will blow forty lakhs, and then I will come. I get so many resumes, M MS they have done. Now they want a job in India. Foreign country policies are changing. Okay, it's very difficult to continue there because of all the change in all this. Everyone, country, every country wants its own people. Then you think I've spent forty lakhs, so when I come to India, I need at least ten lakhs. No company is giving you ten lakhs. Did you get it? Unless you are so great. Did you get it? So then they end up. Then they don't want to do a five lakh job because I've invested forty lakhs. So for your mistake, company will not pay. So students, please think. Only if you want to get into research and development or teaching, then do a higher studies. Okay, so this is one thing which I want to tell the students because many students know because parents are forcing. Oh, what is B? B is more than enough. B is great. Only in medical you need to do higher studies and all those. But engineering is such a field that B is more than enough. Yeah. Any yeah, question? Well, well, I think uh, uh, you have covered each and every aspect of what a student has to know uh, within a short span of time and. Uh, Uh, all the queries have been answered as of now, and uh, uh, Raksha has asked. Uh, yeah. What some technical uh, what uh, courses certificates can we add a certificate? Yes, you can add that in the resume, but please expect questions. Anything put in the resume, expect questions. Okay, and at least three answers. You know, I am great in. Uh, I'm uh, my technical skills are good. I'm a great uh, leader. My communications are good. Give me, everything should be backed by three examples. Okay, so if you have done this course, uh, and if it was just a, you can add a certification course, but you should uh, uh, don't say I did it that time. I forgot about it. They will ask questions. So I'm not interested in your certification because you have done it. I will not ask you. You don't put. I'm not bothered. But please put if you have done, and also know what you have done. Okay, yeah. any other questions from the students you can just they can ask. unmute also if they want yeah yeah you can unmute and ask questions directly to ma'am hello vikas sir can i have a one question yeah sure oh, ma'am ma please go ahead please go ahead please uh, hello rashmi ma'am it's my myself purnima raikar <laughs> i had a talk with you do uh, for uh, like i had uh, had a talk many times i had a call with you in a phone call i had a talk with you uh, today i'm happy to see you yeah i'm face to face yeah 
I think. Uh, uh... Hello, ma'am. Yes, yes. Yeah, please, ma'am. She's listening. Uh, hello, Rashmi, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I can hear. Please go ahead. Uh, 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 actually, I want to ask a small question. Uh, whether for a student. like who is uh, going for who is representing our college and for any of the campus counseling like counseling type of thing with the student uh, or whether we want to have a college to hire an psychiatrist so that uh, they can counsel our students oh you are talking i didn't get a part of the question whether you should have obtained the counselor in your college is it professional yes i highly recommend it because it is i think because when you have so many students in a college a counselor is very very important a counselor is the first step you know so you know many times you cannot discuss some things with your parents or your friends so the counselor is a neutral person you know so approachable uh, because there is a confidentiality and so a counselor is very important because at this age there's a lot of issues which are there in the students mind so yeah but it's a counselor because they, you know please check the background of a counselor the counselor should be trained and the counselor is very very important very important yes okay <laughs> it's nice meeting you ma'am Yes. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, well, I think uh, you have covered every aspect in a nutshell, and possibly within this one hour of time duration, uh, I, we cannot expect much more than this. And definitely, we would like to see much uh, inputs from you uh, from the days to come. And uh, I uh, request all the students, if you have any questions offline, also you can just uh, post the questions queries to her. She'll be interact. She's ready to interact with you. Uh, i'll be sending you her uh, you can uh, can just follow her in the linkedin she is there and she can you can follow her in the youtube she has nice videos uh, and usually i follow all those videos and uh, you are true wow. inspiration for me also ma'am no linkedin no for me what happens like a student they could actually uh, just send me a text you know that is easier because for me to defend a voice recording is easier because yeah. linkedin i got some 20000 or something for me to answer individually becomes very difficult you know yeah. so but Message uh, comes to me. Uh, you know, you, you can share my number. Uh, so what uh, my number is double line uh, double line eight six double line eight six four seven five five one seven. So you can text me uh, WhatsApp. Uh, you know WhatsApp. Please text me, and uh, I will reply to you. You know, so that may uh, over voice message. So that is easier for me. Okay. So any specific, you could always do that. Yes. Nice of you, ma'am. So well, I think uh, we can wind up this session, and it was a very uh, eye-opener session for all my uh, fifth and seventh semester students. And uh, hopefully, definitely, this will help them to excel in their uh, upcoming placement drives. And I wholeheartedly thank uh, Professor Rashmi for uh, accepting our invitation and uh, being part of this wonderful webinar session. Uh, actually, this was planned uh, in the month of February, March, on the eve of Women's Day, but unfortunately, it couldn't happen. And thanks to COVID and the online platform, that we could be able to meet again. Uh, so uh, well uh, i once again thank you on behalf of kls management principal vice principal punima ma'am entire placement team uh, uh, for uh, uh, being part of this webinar as a resource person and uh, i request all the students to make uh, best use of her words and uh, thank you all the students for joining this session ma'am uh, we can uh, wind up the session yeah, any, any 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 last words from your end i think for the fifth semester please just uh, take the tips that i have shared to have a good project in place Your marks, you know, you have time, and uh, more or less whatever I've covered, the same thing holds good for you. You know, and concentrate on your aptitude. Seven semester aptitude, you know, okay, they are already there, but aptitude is one thing where ma maximum screening is going to take place. So I think if you can concentrate on your aptitude, uh, technical anyway should be there in place. You know, so I think you should be good to go. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So uh, we'll wind up the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.